Hello and welcome to episode 117 of the Boot Nerds podcast. Jay Mike, what's up? You know, uh, you know the thing when you when you when you move and you think, okay, I've got a lot of stuff, but it's going to be pretty easy packing. And then you start <laughs> packing and you realize I I've I've really got a lot of stuff, but I'll manage. And then a couple of day, more days pass and you realize I'm not going to manage. This is way too much. Uh, that's the kind of situation I'm in now. Um, moving studios and it's, uh, you know, if you've seen any Unisport videos, you'll know I have a lot of football boots. And uh, I had way more than I, well, they, they take up more space than I thought they would. So, so yeah, I'm in packing mode. <laughs> How are you? There is, I can't think of too many things worse in life than moving. It's just... There's nothing fun about it nope. at all. No. Nothing. And and you just got to get through that period where it sucks when you have to pack and it sucks when you have to unpack and start building things and, you know, get get, get things working. And then you can enjoy it after a month or so. It's just, it's just a full month of just crap. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, ah. <laughs> so, yeah, it is what it is, but still, you know, it's going to be... It's always nice to 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 sort through things and yeah, it's not too bad. But hey, I'm not complaining. I get to pack down and unpack all my football boots, so so it's all good. I was like in Canada. You can't not complain. My line is that I have nothing to complain about, and I'm doing really well. Weather's been okay. been pretty good. You know what? Lots of boots to try out and talk about. It's 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 exciting to be doing what we're doing right now. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, and also, I think it's exciting to be talking about what we are talking about today. But before we get into that topic, uh, if you enjoy the Boo Nerds podcast, and if you, for some reason, haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I don't know what you're doing, but you should totally go and do it. Click the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and you'll get that little ding when, uh, whenever we drop a new video, which usually happens every week. Also, if you, uh, if you enjoy the content, please leave a thumbs up on the video. That will help us quite a lot. But Josh, we are talking about something that uh, you have gone over on your channel. I've talked about it on the Unisport channel. We are discussing the big three speed boots on the market. So we are talking about, well prepared, I see. <laughs> I'm well prepared. Well, I'm always well prepared. <laughs> We're talking about uh, the X speed flow. Right here, I have the pluses, but we can also go over the point ones. Uh, up against the Puma Ultra 1.3s and the Mercurial Vapor 14s. Uh, and as we're going to say in the title, we're going to ask the question, have Nike lost finally in the speed boot battle? Are they falling behind in the speed boot battle? I think that's what a lot of people want to know because with the introduction of the XP flow and the Ultra 1.3, um, finally we have two speed boots that can really rival and, and, and challenge what Nike have kind of had a, a bit of a monopoly on with the, the materials for the last couple of years. So have they lost the speed boot throne? That's what we're going to answer. Don't, don't just say yes or no right now, because that would be the shortest episode in the history of the Puno's podcast. But <laughs> where, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the, on the speed boot market right now? Uh, I think it is probably the most competitive that it's ever been. <laughs> and I said this in my video, the cop-out answer is that there's really no bad choice. Yeah. Whether, I, whether you I go Vapor, Superfly... <laughs> Speed flow plus speed flow it's point true. one. That it's yeah. it's super cliche to say, but there genuinely isn't any of those boots that I wouldn't happily wear for two full seasons in a row. I, I it's I'm really struggling to pick a favorite right now. But that's a but that's I, a good thing. I, it it is a really good thing. I think what I can say definitively, and I guess it kind of answers your question, is that. The Mercurial, both the Vapor and the Superfly would be my last pick over really? the options from Addy and Puma. Okay. Um, and that, I think, is very specific to my feet. I'm slightly flat-footed, and I find that while I can get a comfortable fit in a pair of Mercurials, I, I can sometimes struggle with that little bit of foot cramping just through the midfoot. It's It's... I still find it tighter overall in terms of how closely it wraps your foot partnered with the structure of the upper compared really? to the other two. Oh. And just 
when it comes down to it, I don't find them as comfortable as the ultras or the speed flows. And that it's, it's not a big difference, but that's the little, one of the little things that separates it for me. Oh, wow. I, because for, for my foot, uh, the, the materials definitely feel like, and, and it sounds super weird because it's never been like that, but they feel like the, the widest and, really? the, and, the, and the roomiest, uh, particularly in the midfoot. Because I think the, 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 the forefoot, the toe box on, 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 you know, especially the speed flow and also the, the, the ultras are a bit wider. A bit more uh, roomy in in that regard, but but the midfoot for me, there's a bit more uh, what you would call dead space. There's a, there's a bit more material, loose material, in the Mercs that, uh, compared to the uh, the Ultra uh, and the and the Speed Flow. But but v- very interesting. Uh, but but that's a like if I told you two years ago that in two years time you would rank the Mercs third out of the the, the big three. Uh, speed boots. Would you have believed me? Uh, I th- I think I would simply okay. based on the fact that it, it it's had to only be a matter of time before Adidas put out something that truly rivaled the Mercurial and Puma has kind of just been on this hot streak over the last two years. Um, and, and look, the Mercurial has, if we look back, the Mercurial has had some rough models. They have been very fortunate in benefiting from their main competitors kind of slipping up at the same time. And they kind of just inevitably ended up slipping up at the least, therefore still maintaining the number one spot. But I think right now, and again, it's, it sounds like we're, we're, we're like faulty Nike for making a subpar football boot. I think the mercurials right now are, are excellent. Uh, I'm at, I'm at the point now where I still feel like, Maybe they did take a minor step back from Vapor 13 Superfly 7. I, I I think that's, you can make an argument that it's a little bit better football boot, certainly a little bit more comfortable, at least for me. Sure. But it, it's not like a gigantic step backwards. No. Um, I, I just think that what Puma and Addy have come up with is it's it's special and it's it's hard, it makes the decision much harder than it has been. I, I, I totally agree. And, I, I see it this way that for the first time in in a long long time there are three speed boots that do something different within that same speed boot spectrum. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we, yeah. We have we have the uniqueness of the speed flow, and and I'm particularly talking about the plus. That for me is performance wise, the point one I feel is better. But but this is you know what really draws me to to the speed flow. I think the ultras are just fantastic because of of. That thin upper, so thin, it's so light, and still it, it's actually really nice and comfortable to wear. Performs really well, and then we have the vapors, which it has gravitated more towards the middle and and towards being a more, uh, should we say, generally uh, appealing football boot over the last couple of years with the twelve, um, the thirteen, and the fourteen. But it's not a bad speed boot by any means. I would still say that it's in fact a really really good one but it perhaps just doesn't feel as specialized um as niche as the XP flow and the ultras do um and, and maybe that's what uh, that would be what are swaying you and me and, and other people towards the XP flow and towards the ultra because the speed boosts have always been for those people looking for something very niche specific um thing do, do, yeah. do you know where I'm going with this? I, I get what you're saying, but I also think there's somewhat of a recency bias there. And I, I guess just a, a, a general bias on curiosity. Because I think with Nike, part of the reason why the Mercurial series has been so successful for so long is that when you get a pair of Mercurial, whether it's this generation, the last one, the one before that, you know it's going to feel like a pair of Mercurials, right? Where Puma and Adidas... They don't really have that signature feel to their speed boot line or haven't had one up until this point. We'll see if that changes with new models as they come out. But I think what we're experiencing right now with speed flow and the latest ultra is like, wow, this is to the same standard as what Nike is up to with the Mercurial series, but also different. And I think as a self-proclaimed boot nerd, as we both are, that's that's something that's like, wow, I, I really like this. It's not like anything I've tried before, but it's also very good. And yeah. I don't necessarily think you get that with the latest Mercurial. 
It's just like, oh, this is a mercurial. It's great. It performs well. It fits great. Like, but it's it's we've seen it before. Yeah, and with that said, I mean, I'm just thinking here. Uh, I might as well say now, and if you've seen the Eurosport video, you know uh, that I would probably I would probably go for the X because it's just so unique and it has this like this tooling is absolutely bonkers <laughs> in terms of responsiveness and, and 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 feel when you push off. But with that said, I'd probably go with the Mercs over the Ultras. Uh, just because you have a little bit more boot, and I love like the the whole shape of the boot, the way they, it, it's just still got something about it. And we shouldn't we shouldn't um, undermine how good of a football boot it still is. Yeah, but 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 for me, it's just again as a boot nerd, as a speed boot fanatic, I've always been that. It just appeals to me that 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 the XP Flow and and the Puma Ultra One Point Three they have a bit more of that. Uh, it's like they know a bit more what they want and they're hyper-focused on going, doing that one thing extremely well. Yeah. Uh, look, I think it's I think it's both Adidas and Puma going after something that we haven't really seen them do in the past and it's extremely well executed. So mm-hmm. in that regard, mm-hmm. again, I, it's just, it's more exciting, it's different. Sure, sure. Never seen it before. Where while well, Nike did something pretty cool with this Vapor Posit Upper, it's not unlike anything else we've ever seen. Um, I, I think what I mean, you it's really pretty similar to the ultras. It's yeah. Well, it, some regard, right? It's a sandwich. Yeah, it really upper. is. It really is. And, and I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because I think again, it's, there's so much subjectivity to this. Everyone's going to have a little bit of a different opinion based on feel, but tell me if you agree. I, I think the Mercs, when you're talking about the best barefoot feel, might again be last place at a, compared to these other two. I think the ultra is probably the best, if you just want the thinnest feel, that's sure. the one to go for. Sure, but it's also and, the and stickiest. I, it, it is also got more, it has more grip on the upper, but again, yeah, that's man. a personal preference thing. Sure, sure. And then I think what Adidas has going with both versions of the speed flow is, is something that is equally as thin as the Mercurials, but more pliable. It has, I don't want to say softer, a softer feel, because it's not padded in any no, way, no. but it I seems to move think. nicer with your foot. It's more flexible. Where the Mercs, the Mercs just... They're not as thin as the Ultras. They're a little bit stiffer than the Ultras. It, it, again, it has that signature mercurial feel, but I think when you get something so similar but executed in a way that you could argue is more comfortable in the Ultra, it just makes me say, wow, I don't, I'm not as impressed with the mercurial as I was initially. Mm. The funny right? thing is, um, and I've thought about this a couple of times, is ever since I saw the speed flow a long time ago, uh, that... We had the Vapor 13 and we had the X Ghosted. And um, and the Vapor 13 was a knit boot uh, and the X Ghosted was this sandwiched um, synthetic upper. And now they've kind of just swapped around. Yeah. Uh, and, and, it, and it seems like, you know, the Vapor 13 was a fantastic boot. I, I don't know if I prefer the Vapor. It's more like, I don't want to say it's a step forward or backwards. It's more like a sidestep doing something slightly different, but being just, just as enjoyable for me. Sure. But but it's just a funny little thing I've, I've thought about a couple of times. And like, like you say, there really isn't, you can't make the wrong choice here. No. One thing I do want to ask you about, Josh, is that now we're talking about XP Flow Plus against the Ultra and the Vapors. Enter the speed flow point one. And the whole equation changes a little bit for me because I mean, I probably still choose these, uh, even with the point ones in there because the feel is just so outrageously wild and, and impressively good. But and this is this is a bit of a hot take, and 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 tell me if you agree with it or not. But I am going to say that right now, for me, the X Speed Four Point One, performance wise, pure speed boot wise, is the best boot that your money can buy. It delivers everything you want. I it's, it's a it's a bit of a controversial one. I look, I, I I I'm not mad at that statement. I, I can agree with with that because it's again objectively really really impressive, I, and I think this is where it becomes tricky to compare all of these boots. Is you have to try and separate them in individual categories. And fit is is purely personal preference, very down to your foot type. If you try all three on, one is going to fit everyone a little bit better sure, than the other. Sure. So that's normal. Then you talk about 
responsiveness in lockdown. And I think speed flow plus, obviously a little bit of a strike against being laceless. Yep. It's not as responsive as all of your other options with laces. But then again, I think you're kind of splitting hairs. I would personally, because the speed flows have this more pliable upper, I don't think they're quite as responsive as the Mercs or the ultras, but it's a very small difference. Um, the ultras and the Mercs in terms of responsiveness, I almost put them on the same level. Talk about sole plates. I think Nike still has something special in that anatomic shaping for the Mercurials. It mm. does give you this very connected, locked-in sensation. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously the Carbitex insert on the speed frame of the speed flow, nothing feels like that. Exactly. But then at the same time, I think what Puma has in the Ultra, while it's definitely not as snappy or as, it, it doesn't give you that same energy return it's good through enough, the forefoot. Right? It's good enough. But it's really, really good, and it's it's it feels very natural. It works well with mm. the upper. But then here's here's kind of the big thing with the ultra and that sole plate. It is significantly lighter than all of the other options by a large margin. So if you really want the lightest possible feel, there's no question that you should go for the ultra. Sure. And then again, when you're talking about a barefoot touch, you're kind of splitting hairs. They're all very similar to each other. So yeah. So here's what I again, when you compare football boots, it's it's. You can look at the objective characteristics, and I think that they're all these boots are so objectively good, it's difficult to compare them in that way. So I would think if I'm I'm the average consumer, how am I realistically going about picking between these boots? And this is this is where I think I am right now. Is I don't see how the Speedflow Point One or Vapor Fourteen Elite, because the Superfly and the Plus are even more expensive, but I don't see how the Vapor and the Point One are worth $50 more than the Ultra. I, I, I don't think you're getting $50 more football boot. I, I think what Puma is offering at that $200 price point is ridiculous. And that's I, for me how I would, if, if I were picking right now and it's, it's my money, I think I would go Ultra. I can't not agree with that because you make a lot of sense with that point. And I think it's fair. Um, and I think if I hadn't been me and completely screwed my head in terms of like what I prefer and what I like, uh, if I was a normal consumer, I'd probably do the same and just think, okay, you're getting so much value for money. It's probably the best value for money you're getting in any boot, but maybe the Mizuno, uh, elite boots, uh, at that price point, it's ridiculous how good it feels. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and and still, when we're looking at what what is the what is the speed flow point one? Did, did we say two fifty? Two fifty US. I don't two, know what it is in Europe. I think it might be less in Europe. It probably is because we're good like that. Uh, Unisportstore.com. Why can't I remember this? We talked about it just last week. It's ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? Two hundred and twenty euros, Jay. Okay, okay. it's twenty euros it more, right? There. So, yeah. so you know, for me, that would be a bit of the where I was a little bit hesitant and just going for the ultras because 20 euros more, it's, it's, it's more money, no, but it's not it's a not lot a more deal. money. And yeah. I really like the Carbitex tool. I, I, I appreciate that a lot. And while the upper on the speed flow point one is not for me as fantastic, it's not that vacuum super, um, uh, what should I say, speed skate like fit, but it's still very good. Super, super soft and flexible. And you get that lockdown in terms of hardcore performance. I would really be, you know, swaying between those two but i mean you can't argue against 200 euros for a boot like that it, it is no. difficult and and then again what i would tell people is that again you can't go wrong with either of them and basically as you say comparing them and and, and ranking them basically is at the end of the day it is splitting hairs the differences they don't really matter that much because at the end of the day it's about what fits your foot the best? And here you've got a, you know, you've got some options. So I, what I would do is that if you're in doubt, <laughs> buy all three, try them out at home, see see what fits you the best, and then send the two back that you don't want. That's what I, I mean. It that's a lot of money, obviously, but you're gonna get it back when you send it back. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's you're it's, buying it's online. Yeah, and you really, really can't decide. That's not that's not a bad company. way to go. Yeah. And I want to clarify my Puma Ultra take here because I yeah, think Puma that boy. choice it's is based. Comments are going off. 
<laughs> I, no, you can't I, say I anything anymore just, on the internet, can you? Yeah, it's 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 based on. I think that's if you're looking at the booze purely from an objective standpoint, yeah, right? Yeah. You're not getting a, a noticeably better product in any way by spending more money on the Nike or Adidas alternatives. With that said, we are both huge advocates for the Mizuno brand and their Made in Japan product line, which according to a large amount of the internet is complete overkill, totally unnecessary, and you just don't need it. And if if you can justify a Made in Japan Mizuno product, then I can absolutely approve of you justifying spending more money on a Mercurial or any version of the Speedflow over the Ultra because they are equally as good. It's kind of just like pick your flavor because they're all slight variants on the same flavor effectively. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I, I say as if I was a regular consumer that I would buy the Ultra, but knowing myself, I would probably end up buying all three at some point in time just out of curiosity. So... But we're so Look, weird, Josh. It's like it's it, hard to it generalize. It depends on what your budget allows for, yeah, I guess, right? Yeah, that's, but that's true. But but I mean, interesting. I would love to hear your takes on all of this in the comments right down below. Obviously, we've heard a lot of uh, you know from our regular viewers who also watch your channel and and the Unispo channel. Uh, but you know, chip in with more discussion uh, in the comment section right down below. Who is the king of the speed boot market right now? I genuinely can't say. Because I think they're all doing really well, but I think it's fair to say that Nike have kind of lost that undisputed throne that they maybe had a couple of years ago and that they've always kind of had, right? Except for maybe, you know, 2010 to 14, where the Nike boots were kind of crap and Addy were. And, and you know what? Here's another point that I'll, I'll throw in there. And I think this is where Nike has positioned themselves pretty well. It's that they... They launch on a different release schedule than everybody else, especially the Mercurial. And it seems like they always pick a spot where it's the only new speed boot coming out. And I think that helps them. It would have been very interesting to see everyone's response had the Vapor 14 Superfly 8 launched in the same couple of weeks as the Ultra and the Speed Flows. Because then I think you get a much more like accurate picture of what people are really into and how much they're buying into the different marketing and the tech and all it is. Right. Because I, I think right now there's obviously way more hype around the new ultra sure, and the new sure. speed flows because they're new, right? right? Where the now, Mercs have been around for several months now. And, and with that set, you know, I thought that uh, the speed flows and the ultras would, would, would completely take over the hype, but of course they also launched first, but I think we've also seen quite a significant amount of hype for the Chembo legend nines. And, and again, they launched first, so it's maybe a bit more in people's, um, what do you say that? Top, a bit more top of mind? It's, it's, I, I, it's, I can it's say the word in Danish. It's on, on their mind right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can say it in Danish. It doesn't make any sense in English. Anyways, <laughs> uh, but, but I think you're making a good point that if the Mercs came, you know, right in the middle of, of the speed flows of the Ultras, people would be a little more, ah, ah. you know, it's just... What's 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 new? Because you know you've got this monster that looks like something out of, you know, if they make a, a Space Jam movie in in twenty years again, I mean this this is this is something I would expect from that. So, it just looks very futuristic. But anyways, is is it can be a long discussion, and I don't think it's it's fair to say that Nike have um, really lost. No, oh, I lost Josh. Josh hung up. Doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So, so that's, that's, was that too controversial for you? Um, I touched my headphones and apparently that hangs up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go and pay uh, X amount of hundred dollars for a pair of super clever uh, Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth <laughs> headphones and they just, yeah. Don't know how to use them. No, they, they hate Jay. Well, it's, <laughs> it was, anyways, let's put, uh, let's leave it there. Josh, I don't think it's fair to say the Nike have lost the throne um, because, you know, they can arguably still be up there for a lot of people, but I, th I think it's 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 definitely a a, a hotter market, um, fierce competition. Yeah, let's see what the future brings. Yeah, Excited. we'll see because it's it's going to be interesting. And this is like I I realize if you came for like a definitive answer, we have we have really disappointed you. Because, but like we can't, we just can't. Okay, <laughs> at, at least I picked a favorite. Did you pick a favorite? 
So questions. <laughs> no, if I look two girls over drinks, I have to give you a favorite. I uh, if I go out to a match tomorrow, I have to play, and and it's happened while I've been testing the boots. I'm gonna pick the uh, the Speedflow Pluses. Speedflow Plus. Okay. I know, I know, it's a laceless boot and all that, but you know. The lack of lockdown is not is not criminal enough for me to to not like it and and you know that feeling is just it does something mentally for me and, and I love it so yeah and slight I, favorite look, I'm with you on that that would be my second pick yeah I'm with you you, you you'd pick the ultras I I'd pick the ultras yeah. I I just the ultra is a football boot as special as Speedflow Plus is the ultra is for me, like everything that I look for sure. in a pair of speed boots. Sure. And I think something that's really been lacking in speed boots over the last, what, seven years, six mm -hmm. years, however long since F50 Addy Zero has kind of left, is that super lightweight feel. Yeah, the, the Ultra has a weightless sensation on your foot. And that to me is something that has has been missing from speed boots for a long time now. And I think this kind of, it doesn't feel weightless. It just feels gone except yeah. for when you push off where you feel like you have 2000 rocket boosters underneath your foot uh which, and, which and is fantastic i'll also say with the ultra unlike the mercurials and unlike the speed flows is i i do like the more flexible feel of the soul plate sure but that's something i've always been kind of partial towards mm. and, and I, you get that a little bit more from the ultra than you get from the other two gotcha i'm i'm the opposite but i'm weird like that and uh the funny thing was that we 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 put it to bed and we kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> but there you got You got the favorite. Uh, but to be fair, like I said, it's it's like we're talking margins here. So fine margins, yeah. but hey. We got some questions, Josh. Um, so one from Paul Anderson, regular uh, viewer or listener of the podcast. Hey guys, so when it comes to the name change and model change, do you think that the Superfly 2 to the Superfly 3 name change was warranted? Mm, no. No, because they changed. Considering it. they changed almost nothing, changed the no. volume of the toe box, and that was kind of it. I, I would say in general, you know, the Superfly twos and threes weren't warranted at all. Just yeah, no, the, the Superfly <laughs> one through three could have like just they had no as business. important as they were for tech in football sure. boots at the time. They just weren't very good. Right. There was then also so three was lower toe box, and they added that extra lace hole at the top. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the lace hole. Yeah, I forgot about that. But then again, you know, they, they also told brands how not to build football boots and sell them for, what, $400. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Crazy. We can, you know, constant... Oh, we're always going to hate on those and the Tequila 2s. Uh, sorry, the Bizarro 2s. <laughs> um, tequila 2s were also not great, but hey. It is what, anyways, uh, Horvath... Horvath? Benz. Benze. Butchering that name, sorry. Hey guys, I was thinking about maybe you could do a new updated match ball review for the 2021-22 season with the new UCL ball, the Nike Flight 2, the Brilliant Super V21, etc., etc. Because it would be interesting to see what the brick bands have changed on their footballs for this season. To be honest, they've not changed a lot, but I'll be happy to do that uh, once I'm settled in the new studio. You, you yeah, down I to do that? I think that would be that'd be an interesting video because I I try to do match ball videos and mm. talk about the intricacies of how one ball differs from the next, but there's not very many people that want to sit there and listen okay. for 15 minutes. So but I think in podcast form, uh, yeah. it would be pretty interesting to talk about that. Right, right. So we don't have people who want to listen for 15 minutes, but let's talk about it for 45. Well, <laughs> 15 minutes of me talking to myself. <laughs> I, know what you, I know what you say. I'm just being a, yeah leave it out um i'm being an idiot uh scott <laughs> darrock i'm a leather boot guy and i play in the central mids and i'm considering mizuno for the first time and that scott is probably the best decision in your boot life you'll ever make what is the better boot the neos or the repulous now josh i'll let you i'll let you take this and i'll chip in i would want the morelia two, and get neither of those <laughs> okay that's what I would pick. Really? If, I, if I really, really wanted just like the best leather boot Mizuno makes, I'd buy the classic Morelia. Well, I can, I can kind of get behind it, but really? Yeah. I mean, no hate to the Morelia 2s, but wow. Fair, you wouldn't take that the Ultra That would be Lights? my pick. You take the Morelia 2s? Ultra, yeah, fair enough. 
I think, Scott, I don't want to tell you what, what you like, obviously. Uh, but, but since you're asking, I would go for the Neo 2s. Uh, they're perfect for my narrow foot. Uh, I think it, it, it's, it's the perfect combination of a boot that does a little bit of everything. They're light. They're decently responsive for, for what you want. They're, they're not, they can't compete with the speed boots, uh, the, like the hardcore speed boots, but, but they're, they're responsive enough. I would say they're wonderfully comfortable when you break them. But that leather, even out of the box, is, is stupidly uh, good. It's only in the full foot though. Uh, so, so it is a bit of a like, it's a bit more shaven down version compared to the Morelia 2s, which is the Copa Mundial equivalent. Very plush leather, super, super soft. But there's also the Repula, and I think we shouldn't forget it. And and we haven't been raving about it as much as we did the Repula 3. Um, but I think every time I come back to the Repula Cop, I am impressed. And it kind of gives you that middle ground between the Morelia Neo, which is very lightweight and, 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 and should we say, uh, more to, to shaving down to the bone, and, and the Morelia 2. So it sits a little bit in between, super lovely. Think the Jumbo Legend 9, but just more padded. What the Jumbo Legend 9 should have been, basically. Uh, um, no, that's harsh. Okay, look here. I, for me, it, I think it depends on if you're debating between those two boots, your foot shape, very narrow, go for the Neos. If you want it uh, a little bit wider, roomy, go for the, the Repulous. And if you have a slightly wider foot again, more of the twos. Yeah. Go on. I, I yeah, I think if, if you just want pure leather, classic Morelia. If you sure. want that tighter, more speed boot esque feel, sure. definitely go for the Neo line. Yeah. And look, I'm going to do something that I don't think we've ever done on this podcast. I'm going to not recommend a Mizuno boot. But, and again, having had some time to reflect, I think if you're really leaning towards Rebula Cup because you like that memory foam kangaroo leather combo, I think you save the money and just get the Legend. I, I do. I think you just get the Tiempo Legend 9. Who are you? I don't I don't think I don't think I like the Rebula Cup more enough more to justify the the basically what almost hundred dollar price difference between them. Yeah. You know, I can I personally I don't agree. Uh if money is an, an issue, I would probably go for the elites instead. Um but but hey. <laughs> I, I see where you're coming from, but, but you know, fair enough. Uh, you could also do something very wild and just go for the King Platinums. They're 200 euros. King Platinum is also really good. I mean, it's, it's I very normal. And nonsense. another solid alternative to something like a Neo. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We have uh, a guy called Jude. I'm confused. Should I buy the Puma Ultra for the comfort, even though it would be far too wide for my very narrow foot? I think we're talking the 1.1s and 1.2s. Okay. Uh, should I buy the future set as it's slightly narrower, but I sacrifice some comfort? Uh, or should I go for the King Platinum to try out a leather boot? Any advice? Um, I don't necessarily think that the future set is less comfortable than the one, well, a little less slipper like maybe, but it, the future set, correct me if you disagree, but I, I still think it's super comfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, it depends on what you want. There's a little bit more of a, 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 a tighter fit in the future set. You get a little bit more texture on the upper, but lovely boot by all means. Uh, super stable uh, tooling, uh, outsole and all that stuff. The ultras are just nice. It just works. It's comfortable, it's light, it's easy. Um, King Platinum's very underrated boot. Has a little bit of that, you know, the sleekness from a speed boot, super comfortable, decently lightweight, solid outsole. I mean, oh, an overlooked boot. And we've, we've said that ever since it came out. Overlooked football boot. Yeah. Depends I, I on what you want. Purely for, for narrow, a narrower foot, I think the King Platinum is probably going to fit the best. Probably, yeah. Because um, I really don't, I don't think the Future Z or the Ultra 1.1 or 1.2 are particularly narrow fitting boots at all. Mm. In fact, I would say they trend towards being wider. The Future Z? Um, the I, Future I has... A unique fit to it because of that band through yeah, the foot, yeah. right? It's I mean, I have a narrow foot and it actually fits me really, really snug. Yeah. Which which surprised me. Mm. But but uh, you're right. I mean, for a narrow foot, the, the King Platinum's definitely, uh, I mean, I'd probably go for those. 
it's a, yeah, it's definitely the slimmest shape yes. out of everything on offer from Puma. But again, I, I'm assuming you're picking these models because they're outgoing models and you can get them heavily discounted. But if if that's not the case, Ultra 1.3, have a look at those. Really solid. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you just said, yes. We also have a comment here from TK Kovacs uh, for the last video. We talked about um, the unwarranted or warranted, depending on how you look at it, uh, name or model changes. He says, Jesus Christ, not enough substance to have a video be this long. Well, you watched it, so joke's on you. Um, but look, that's what we do here. I mean, you must be new to the channel because that's what we do on the Boonas podcast. We talk for ages about something that most people would probably talk about for a grand total of 35 seconds, I guess. Um, that's what, that's why we're here. So yeah. How dare we make a long form podcast free of charge to everyone on the internet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this podcast should have been 35 seconds. Oh, my man. Uh, but hey, welcome to the channel. Like the video. Anyways, and now we've <laughs> talked uh, for 30 something, 35, 36 minutes about speed boots. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome back. Brian Okasaki. It's interesting the brands are going to a smaller number of silos. Addy doesn't like back to three Puma only marketing two. Juan and Pericles, my man. Pericles, do you think brands will stick with a smaller number of silos or will they add an additional one soon? Interesting question. Uh, I Two wonder. Girls drinks, you have to answer. Yeah, look, I, I wonder how much COVID has affected brands rolling out less models. I, 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 I feel like right now everyone's waiting to see how the world is going to function moving forward and should things go back to normal or as normal as we're ever going to be at this point, I think all the brands will start introducing more. I think Puma's done a really smart thing for the most part in doing less and concentrating more on marketing the couple things that they do have. Nike is, is a wild card because they could they could stay at three, they could have six in, in six months from now. Like they're just, they're that kind of brand. And look, Adidas now has that wild card slot in terms of, doing something more experimental now that the nemesis is gone, right? So I, as a consumer and as a boot nerd, I'm always for more variety. I, I love to try new things. And if it means that anything additional from any of these brands is more experimental, I think that's exciting. Obviously, there's huge potential for some, some stinkers at, if they go in that direction. But you can also have some home runs and and potentially the next big trend in football boots from, from doing stuff like that, right? Mm. So I, I don't know. It's it's hard right now because I think all the brands are in a pretty strong position, or at least they'll feel that they're in a pretty strong position. So we'll see. I think I think you're making a good point. Pandemic um has a lot to say, obviously. Um but when I read the question, I also thought about does it have to do with the marking being um, more competitive these days? I mean, Nike can't just have four home runs, uh, four home run silos, because, you know, Adidas, Puma, really pushing them. So so they may be, it's just a, it's just a suggestion, this, but they, it feels like they need to focus a bit more on, on, on like, the core. Uh, they need to focus on the materials. They need to focus on the tempos and then have some sort of, silo that isn't a mercurial or a tempo they could hell they could even go back to just having a merc and a tempo and that would still kind of work puma style right uh and you're right variety is good but with the amount of brands that we have right now doing super awesome stuff there's addy doing super well nike they're nike puma have been you know hitting it out the park for the last couple of years mizuno who have been, you know, them is Zuno, they've just been consistent and people are finally starting to realize New Balance is doing great with the Furons. I mean, there's so much choice already that I know what you're saying with that they might come up with something brilliant, but there's also the risk of just the market becoming a little bit more muddy because you're doing something that's already out there just for the sake of doing it. And that, that's one of the reasons that I've liked the, the, the more focused approach of, okay, we, we dial down the numbers a bit, but we focus more 
And I think after this has happened, we've actually seen an increase in the, the quality of those more focused um, silos. So it's a bit like you, you, could, you could argue both ways, I would say, and you would definitely make a fair point the other way around as well. Uh, but, but, but I just have this feeling that we'll, we'll see this as a trend going forward as long as there is, as the market is such a boiling hot uh, kettle of, of competition. Uh, where everyone's do. I mean, you can point to everybody and say, oh, great football boots. Probably some yeah. of the best boots they've ever made. Uh, what I am missing right now is this super expert. I mean, they, all, they will all tell you, especially in like uh, uh, press briefings and all that stuff that, oh, we have this experimental innovative silo. <laughs> Get out of here. What I want is something that's just stupid, like, like next level stupid. We don't care if this sells. This is just experimental. This is concept. Yeah. This is just go here's here's like mercurial SL. And I know it's never going to happen in the current uh, climate because of pandemic and, and money and supply of uh, materials and all that stuff. But that's my dream that we Nike, mercurial, Jempo, cool. Something stupid as the third yeah. silo. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think you're right. And, and I know people hate limited releases, especially when they end up being really good. But I really feel like that's, it's, it's almost a, I don't want to say free, but it's an inexpensive mm. way and far less commitment to put something out to the public, see th what the response is. And if people seem to love it, then, hey, if, if you really want to make that into a silo, make that into a silo. Yeah. Like Nike had that opportunity with Flying at Ultra. Like that could have just... Tweak I was that gonna, design a little I was bit. Gonna say, you're going to mention Flying at Ultra. No, put it out there. But they but like, did. But they, why uh, don't they do did, things like that? Yeah, right. Right. Um, so I, I also think you're really, this question really pertains to the business side of football boots, where I think I, I'd love to see what their, their strategy is as far as sales go. But I think you're right. Nike, for example, has the Tiempo and the Mercurial series, which has a long time following for both silos. And if they come out with something that, people are interested in are they just pulling those customers away from mercurial mm. and tiempo because those are always going to continue sure, on sure. as being available right i think any new silo from a brand at least i would assume is some attempt at pulling market share from another brand and competing directly against another product and unless i i, I think new silos especially from nike are going to be based on threat if they feel like someone is gaining a certain part of the market and getting too much of it, I think that's when we'll see a response from Nike in terms of getting that additional silo. And I think Adidas have put themselves in that position now with the Nemesis and Puma. They're kind of doing their own thing and doing a really good job at it. So I, I still feel like Nike is, is the leader in that charge of like, this is the direction that we want football boots to go in. And Adidas has done a really good job at responding over the last five years or so to the Reds, point where you can argue yeah. that they're beating them right yeah, now. Yeah. They have a little bit of a dead dog, I think, in the Copa sense. Sure. I, I don't I don't see that has kind of stalled doing that anything. Right, yeah. Yeah. It, it came just back with a bang with well. the eighteen and nineteen. Sorry, nineteen and twenty. Um yeah. but but you're right. We it needs to if if the Copa line is to be like saved before it falls back into ah, territory um the, the the next for 22 or whenever they do an update has to be a home run because otherwise it's yeah but so, so they have a big job on your hands but I, I i know what you're saying and i just think the whole puma 200 euro price point um thing just threw a major span in the works but it's just yeah. it's like you just set a new precedent for for what you can do in terms of quality and price for football boots and i think that that's the way i want to see the market go obviously so more yeah. people can buy more awesome boots but yeah, I mean, ex exciting times to see when we finally, you know, really get out of, of the, 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 should we say, the fallout of the pandemic uh, to see what the, what the climate looks like at that point. Mm -hmm. But I just, want, yeah. I just want one silo from, from one brand that's just pure stupidity. I don't, I don't care if it sells. I don't care if it's, you know, don't be more than 250 euros. But something that is Adidas game mode that's actually just, you know, elite level and just bonkers. And obviously, I'm yeah. I'm not the kind of guy to come up with the ideas because I'm just a I'm just a bootner. I just make video, which are apparently too long. But um, you know, someone clever should do something clever. 
I've I've seen some concept drawings from a number of brands, and they are perfectly capable of doing something way more outrageous than anything we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I just want to see it. Yeah. So, so that's that's the golden idea, guys. Do something. Some clever genius should do something genius and give it to us for no money, basically. That's what we're. <laughs> that's 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 the golden the golden piece of advice right there. We'll take ten percent. <laughs> But uh, you know, you know what it is. Uh, Josh, um, just to make sure we don't piss off TK Kovacs too much, I think it's time to you know call it quits here. <laughs> Forty-five minutes—that's a respectable time. It's not too, well; it's way too long uh, for for that guy at least. But hey, good episode. If you uh, guys, if you have any comments, comments. Wow, definitely way too long of an episode. I start messing up now. If you have any comments, questions um, about the whole debate, leave them in the comment section right down below. We'll answer the best ones in the next Boot Nerds podcast episode, which might come in like, there's going to be a little bit of a break now because I am uh, I'm moving. So uh, so yeah, go figure. But we'll be back strong as ever um, in a couple of weeks time. So give us some good questions and uh, be safe out there. Enjoy the whole back to football uh, moment. It's going to be so awesome. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave us a like if you had a good time. And yeah, I'm Pericles, J-Mike, and I approve this message. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.